This week on the bonus round, we're at GT's headquarters in Los Angeles with Shane Satterfield from Sifted Games, Andrew Renee from GameStop TV, and Jovenshire from Smosh Games. And this week's topic, eSports. Are they a sport or are they not? They're huge tournaments like the International and the League of Legends Finals. Why do people watch them? And where do they go in the future? The future of eSports right now on the bonus round. The bonus round is back here at GT. I'm Jeff Keeley with Shane, Andrea, and Joven. And this week in the bonus round, we are talking about the rise of eSports, which is a phenomenon that has had this sort of second life to it, I think. I remember years ago on Spike, we would do like the World Cyber Games, and this was all, you know, this big phenomenon. Then it sort of died out. And now with all these MOBAs, it feels like eSports has really taken off. Uh, you know, certainly the international... They just put the tickets on sale for that, sold out in minutes. I mean, that's a full arena. League of Legends couldn't be bigger. They're actually doing all the uh, North American uh, season of the old G4 studios there in Santa Monica yeah. that they've taken over, um, where they're doing you know, broadcasts every weekend with you know hundreds of thousands of people watching. It's like um, the Call of Duty championships that's this, right. this past weekend here in LA. Yeah, so yeah. it's like all these games, it feels like you know eSports is really taking off in a big way. Joven, are you are you an esports guy? Do you follow the scene? I have loved video games since I could hold a controller well, but I've never ever been so good at a game that I could compete at right. it. And so when I when I watch them, I can't get behind it. Now, yeah. I, I just it blows my mind how big it's gotten. Like you said, like it, it was big and then disappeared, then Twitch just made yeah. mobile games something so much more. And like I, for myself, I'm like, these are free to play games. Why am I gonna not play it and watch someone else play? Yep. Like, I, I don't get it, but they get so good at it. I'm like, there has to be something else that you can be doing. But then people start throwing money at them. I'm like, why would you do anything else? Just keep being good at this game. <laughs> it's not for me though. I don't see it as a sport. Mm -hmm. I see it as just like, there's a, a group of people that have gotten so good at one game that but there's That's a skill there, right? Yeah, th there's an ab absolute uh, skill to it, um, and it is. What do you think is different? Like you say, it's not a sport. What do you think is different between what they do and what a sport is? Well, uh, we, me and Andrew, were actually looking this up beforehand, like yes. looking at what a definition of a sport oh, is, wow. right. and it actually so should have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we were, were ready. We were arguing about it, so we had okay. to go to the internet. It's like, wait a second, what's actually real? Um, and it doesn't have the physical exertion that you should get from right. a sport. Yeah. And I think that's a really big part of it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not belittling uh, people that do compete because I could not do what they do. My brain right. does not work right. as fast as their brains work. Yeah. But is chess a sport? I, I, look, I'll say this. I do play League of Legends. And yeah. I'll tell you, there are moments when I'm playing that game where my heart rate goes yeah. like it does when I'm playing hockey. It right. literally goes that high because... Yeah. It's such a high stakes oh, intense, game yeah. and it's very intense. And yeah. like once you get over the hump and the learning curve is severe for MOBAs and for in a game like League of Legends, but once you kind of get over that hump and understand how everything works, like your brain is just going in like 20 different directions at once. You're not just watching your lane, you're watching everybody else's and you're watching the jungler to see if he's gonna come down and try to gank you. There's so much involved in it. It's, it's strategy yep. and execution under pressure. And that's a big part of sports, is executing under pressure. And that's the one element of esports, and MOBAs in particular, right. that I feel like it actually nails. But if you're really talking, is, is it a real sport and whatnot? Well, look, late night on ESPN, there's poker. Yeah. And there, you know, to me, esports, yeah. I think, you know, esports has been on ESPN already. Yeah, it was, it's absolutely. been on it a mm -hmm. bunch of times. And I think that's what you're going to see, is you're going to see esports kind of taking up those slots where poker, because poker on TV is kind of dying, it got oversaturated. I think you're gonna start see, seeing eSports come in and take those time slots away right. from poker and things I like don't, that. I don't think so. I think the thing about poker that's, that made it so universally appealing is that the rules of, sim or, of poker are pretty simple. Absolutely. Right? So you can learn how to watch poker relatively easily. If you're watching you know, like professional StarCraft II, right. you have no idea what's happening on yeah. screen. Right? Oh, I agree with that. E even and the announcers Dota, don't make right? it any better. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the announcers I mean, use all this lingo and jargon, jargon and they yeah. talk so fast. They're insider, right? It's for the people that, Absolutely. you know, no, it's for other sort of players it's, of that. Yeah, game. it's very niche yeah. now, albeit that niche is huge, right. and it, they they have an outlet for it. But I think yeah. like the people that are playing Dota, they're playing LOL. Uh, they are sitting at their computers playing this game, so they can sit at the computer, play this game on one screen, and have it playing on another monitor. Whereas I don't think now this could change in the next two years. I don't think a person just like casually strolling through channels will stop and be like, oh, that's right. 
Dota 2. Let me sit here and just watch this. Then again, I could I could be wrong because like when the internationals happening uh, up in I think it was was it Seattle last Seattle. year, mm-hmm. um, bars were hosting the matches. But that's yeah. also because they have a hundred thousand people walking through that. That's what they want to see. I don't know, it, it's just it's a very niche and very intense group. Well, I think what's interesting about esports is how they're uh, trying to get or trying to model a lot of what they're doing after traditional professional sports. I know that there was a big story that came out a couple months ago when uh, an esports team got sponsored by um, an adult entertainment site. And that was really big. Like, you know, a major sports team would never allow an adult entertainment site to be their sponsor. Why is it okay for esports? And for me, when I I saw that story, the first thing I thought of was, well, it makes sense the audience goes hand in hand right but <laughs> literally <laughs> literally i think you're right gonna get there. some hate in the comments for that one second. whatever that so you all know you go to those sites don't even <laughs> front. um <laughs> but but the idea that they want to be seen as a major sport the same way that the nba and mlb and nfl are seen as professional sports leagues i don't think will ever happen because the league itself, like the people who run all these leagues, just don't have that level of professionalism yet. I not all of them. To, I'm not trying to blanket yeah. statement everybody, but I think the perception of it is that they're just not at that level yet. I almost feel like if the well, leagues did that, though, that the fans would turn on them. Because I don't yeah. think that the people who actually are into esports or play these games competitively want it to be like the NFL or the NBA or the NHL. I think they like that they're kind of this subculture that's getting all this love and this hype. I mean, look, their numbers speak for themselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. Riot's numbers speak for themselves. The viewership, everything's oh, yeah. selling out in yeah. five minutes. It speaks for itself. They don't need to have that perception from people outside of gaming. Well, but they need, do they need that external sort of validation? Because now it's like they're so big. It's like I think a lot of them are like, hey, you know, we're going to have, I mean, League's going to have 30 million people watching it. I mean, that's like big football yeah. games. Then again, like comparing yeah. normal sports to, to eSports, like, so what? Yeah, there's an adult company that's um, sponsoring esports, but then you don't hear about some e athlete who uh, is running a dog fighting ring or beat up their <laughs> girlfriend in an elevator. Well, because we like, they, sports they, they just don't wholesome. follow them well, like they, they do yeah. athletes. Well, I mean, the no one's gonna watch them on the beach like sunbathing and like shoot a picture of them with like a big <laughs> telephoto. Nah, yeah, but you look at some of like even uh, like Nate Shot and some of these other players. I mean, their personalities and I oh, mean, yeah, they're, like the sure. number of followers they have on Twitter and like on social and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's it's, it's huge. Well, I mean, that was a huge part of the compendium, right, for the international yeah. last year was you bought this digital booklet and you could follow your favorite teams and your favorite yeah. players and kind of, you know, see who was going to win and you could, you know, contribute money to the overall prize pool yep. doing so. And I think we're going to see that get even even bigger, but is it going to get to the level where uh, all of the other major professional sports leagues are? Right. I, I, don't, I don't think so, but I mean, I think yeah, you made a great point, Shane, in saying like, do they even want that or yeah. or need that? I mean, maybe maybe they don't. Well, the barrier of entry is too high. Yeah, I mean, but, particularly for like MOBAs. It's like, look, it took me a good two months of playing League of Legends to not get my butt kicked. Mm-hmm. Like, not be good at it. Yeah. Not in, like to not get annihilated to the point where like people on my team didn't want to like kick me off the team and right. would stop swearing at me. <laughs> and so that's just understanding the game. Like I play the game. I watch these broadcasts. I still don't know what they're talking about half the time. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. what they, they say and how fast they say it. I'm like, up, no, 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 no. I'm like, <laughs> it's like an auctioneer, like auctioning <laughs> off like League of Legends. Stuff. Like, well, that was I remember even the international last year. Valve did a thing where they had like a separate stream, like sort of a newbie stream or something, which was like commentary, that's which smart. was sort of like trying to be a little bit more well, and mainstream. I think I agree with you. I think we're going to see a lot more of that over the next few years because I don't think esports are going away this time. There's just too much of a platform there for them yeah. and as like you you've had like the uh the dc uh moba you've had the lord of the rings moba i think there's these other mobas that are coming out to make them more accessible maybe easier to play so people can then graduate into lol or graduate into a more difficult game like dota 2 and then then they can actually like, compete to that level they just need those baby steps in there because you're right it's it's cutthroat you can't just yeah, jump yeah. in and the community is not exactly welcoming like when new people play on my oh, team. Oh, what video games <laughs> not welcoming? But League of Legends is really no. on this extreme there. Oh, oh no, like, I agree. I make a point to try to help other players because I remember when I was starting, people didn't want to help. They're right. just like, go watch YouTube videos, bro, and yeah. uninstall. Like that's uh-huh. their attitude. Uh-huh. They're yeah. like, just They're don't play. They're the most elitist, just mean people. They you are mean. Like mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I try to be the opposite of that. If I see right. somebody struggling, I try to give them tips and like basically I just tell them like, do your very best to not right. die. Well, I know Valve <laughs> at one point was trying 
trying to figure out a way even in Dota like reward players for helping others. Yeah. We have a like coaching that. program, yeah. Don't yeah. which is great. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Well, now we're seeing universities, select universities are offering scholarships yeah. for esports for students to come and study, you know, computer design and graphic arts and things like that while also training to participate in these in these, you know, competitions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't exactly know how the scholarships work, but the idea that you can now get a scholarship to be an esports athlete the eyes are you know, there. at school to go to get your college yeah. education paid for is like nobody even five years ago would have thought that that was a yeah. thing. The eyes are there, the money is there, we're going to see it expand even more. For sure. All right, we will see. Esports is only here to stay, and uh, <laughs> we've got uh, obviously the international will be big this year. Uh, League of Legends uh, finals coming in the fall to Europe, and uh, yeah, it'll be interesting what the next game is for esports. That's what I wonder about because I, I know Smite. A lot of people are getting excited about now. Um, high res, that seems like that's kind of starting to build. But yeah, it's like interesting with Split the. It might be the first. <laughs> Split <tune. laughs> It might be the first MOBA that they really nail on consoles. Yeah. That exactly. could be the one yep, that kind of sets it off. Cool. And yeah. intrinsically, it's going to be more user-friendly because it has to be because you're using a controller. You don't have a full keyboard yeah. there. I mean, right. League uses almost the whole oh, stinking yeah, yeah. thing. So if you can make a really good MOBA that people will get addicted to that just uses a few buttons, like that's probably the ticket right there. Exactly. And that's what would be curious because you're right. Mostly it's MOBA. And then there's Call of Duty, some other games, fighting games, right? Fighting games are huge. Mm -hmm. Smash and uh, you know Street Fighter, things like that. But yeah, I'll be interested to see like, what that next big game is and can like a Dota or League of Legends, are they going to sustain? Like, are they going to be like sports where it's like timeless, where it's like 15 years from now people are playing Dota? I don't see how League of Legends can... I just yeah. Something well, catastrophic hey, would have to how, happen. How long ago was StarCraft such a huge thing and people still play it, people still watch oh, yeah. it? And mm -hmm. I think if StarCraft would have been as big then as esports are now, I think that conversation, yeah. like imagine what that could be, like Dota and LoL could be the new StarCraft. Yeah. They are. The new they football, are. New basketball. They are. Right. We'll see. All right. Well, uh, that's it for our esports discussion. Next week, we're back with our next edition of the bonus round right here on GT. And that's going to premiere Sunday at noon Pacific. We'll see you then. You can see more episodes of Bonus Round on GameTrailers.com and YouTube.com slash GameTrailers. Plus, check out our always knowledgeable panel of gaming enthusiasts on GT Time. And check out our Just Played on Killing Floor 2.